the Johnson Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. <laughs> of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. In many magazines this month, you'll see another of those beautiful full-page color advertisements for Johnson's Glow Coat. You know the ones I mean. They show linoleum floors that are half dull and half shiny. Well, these photographs are our way of showing you what a wonderfully bright shine you can expect when you use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Glow coat's easy to use. You simply apply it and let it dry. But ah, that glow coat shines. Without rubbing or buffing, Johnson's glow coat dries to a bright wax polish that makes linoleum and other floors look really beautiful. And glow coat is such a work saver. Dusting is easy, and spill things wipe up from a shining, glow-coated floor with just a damp cloth. Linoleum keeps new looking years longer, too. Why not get some Johnson self-polishing glow coat the very next time you shop? Now, after we hear Fibber McGee and Molly, I'm going to announce a very special offer. So be sure to listen. When you come across one of those how-much-do-you-know quizzes in a magazine, there are three ways you can play it. One, the smart way, skip past and pretend you didn't see it. Two, the snide way, turn right to the answers. And three, the honest way, get a pencil, sit down, and make a bum of the editors. Like Mrs. McGee. Of Fibber McGee and Molly. Let me see, number seven. What kind of fur is used to make felt? Yeah, that's a trick question, kiddo. Don't let them fool you. Felt is made out of old hats. They grind them up. <laughs> I think it's rabbit fur. I'll put that down, rabbit fur. Yeah, well, don't say I didn't warn you, Snooky. Question eight. Uh, what is the chemical formula for water? If they mean our city water, that's easy. One part mud, three part bubbles, and enough chlorine to calcimine Paul Whiteman. <laughs> water is hydrogen, two parts oxygen. H2O. Oh, that's part right. Bubbles is oxygen. Question nine. What was Woodrow Wilson's first name? Skip that one. It's too easy. Woodrow. It was Thomas. Hmm? Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Oh, Tom. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and the last question, uh, where does quinine come from? The drugstore. <laughs> I think it's the bark of the cinchona tree. Ooh. <laughs> Let me see now. Answers on page 83. Here we are. Heavenly days, 100%. I answered them all right, dearie. Well, <laughs> no, those questions were very simple, of course. You know what I did in this very room last Monday night? Yes, you upset your root beer all over the floor. <laughs> I listened to Dr. IQ, and if I'd have been in his theater audience that night, I'd have won 23 boxes of Snickers. <laughs> That's what they give the losers, dearie. You're not a loser if you win something. By George, one of these days, I'll get on information, please, too. Then just wait till they ask me to finish that poem about the boy stood on the burning deck. Can you finish it? I'll say I can. The boy stood on the burning deck, whence all but him had flew. It was a cattle boat, and he set it a fire because he wanted a barbecue. <laughs> if they ask me anything about Shakespeare, I'll say... Come in. Oh, it's me or Latrivia. Do come in, Your Honor. Good day, Molly. Hello, McGee. Hi, political. Don't tell us you come straight from the city hall because nobody ever did. <laughs> That's one man's opinion, and I'll take it for what it's worth, which is practically nothing. <laughs> uh, did you vote in the recent municipal elections, McGee? We did not, Mr. McGee. Well, I was too busy, Latriv. The hinge broke on my fishing tackle box, and I was all over town trying to find a welder. I see. <laughs> You're the type of... Uh, type of citizen who'd rather cast aspersions than votes. But you can't dampen my spirits today. I just came from federal court where I had a very happy experience. Acquitted, were you? <laughs> what were you up for, Latrez? Drawing P-38s on three-cent stamps and using them for airmail? <laughs> I wasn't up for anything. I was in court as a character witness in some citizenship proceedings. I never saw a happier group of people. Oh, it must mean a lot to them to be citizens. Well, it should. It means a lot to me to be a citizen, too. Can you prove you are a citizen, McGee? I don't 
don't have to prove it. I was born in the United States. May I see your birth certificate? He hasn't any, Mr. Mayor. Mm. It was destroyed when the courthouse burned down in 1916. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well, don't come to me for help when they start deportation proceedings, McGee. Deportation proceedings? I'm a United States citizen. They can't deportate me. Can they? <laughs> How about you, Molly? Have you anything to prove your citizenship? Oh, yes, I have a passport. I was going to Europe once, but I found out how much it would cost, and I didn't go. Oh. Well, the passport is proof enough. You're in the clear. Hey, now, wait a minute. You mean the government can send me away simply because I got no papers to prove that I... You're kidding, aren't you, Latred? <laughs> He's kidding, isn't he, Molly? For goodness sake, dearie, stop worrying. What if they do send you away? Hmm? You can always come in again on the quota. On the quota? <laughs> I'll meet you at Ellis Island with some sandwiches. <laughs> Gee whiz, I... Oh, this is all a joke. Isn't it? It wasn't a joke to the people who got their papers this morning, McGee. They really studied to pass that examination. Uh, I'll study. I'll study like everything. I'll run down there some morning and pass the test just to be safe. How about it, Madrid? You know the judge. Pass the word that I'm just doing it for fun, see? He'll go along with the gag and I'll have my papers. I'll see what I can do. You'll be in Judge Krieger's court this afternoon at five, McGee. I'll put in a word for you. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Well, is this on the level, kiddo? My gosh, if I flunk the test, what if they... Hey, wait a minute. How can they deport me? Where will they deport me to? A good question. If I ain't a citizen, then I ain't from any place. Well, in that case, dearie, I believe they just haul you around on a ship all the time. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's for me. Travel and see the world. Maybe we can get them to deport you with me and we could just cruise till the cows come. Oh, uh-oh. What's the matter? I just thought of something. I can't let them deport me now. I got a cabin reserved at Dugan's Lake for two weeks in August. Oh, dear. I'll take the test. I'll go down to the library and get some books right now. I'll study. I'll study. I'll be smartest immigrant they ever saw. I will. Don't go away. Billy Mills in the orchestra and the Russian rag. those books a while and rest your eyes, dear. You can't learn everything all at once, you know. No, maybe not, but I darn near have. If anything has happened in the United States since 1776 that I don't know about, they've done it behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of questions uh, do you think the judge will ask you? Oh, for instance, like who's the president of the United States? Who's the vice president? Who's oh, the wait a minute now. Hold it. Who is the vice president? <clears throat> now, let's come back to that later. <laughs> 
ask me something else. Very well. Uh, what qualifications must a man have to become president of the U.S.? Well, he's got to be over 21, native-born, and not look too foolish when they take his picture holding the fly rod with a paper mache trout on it. <laughs> Even if he don't know a copy from a guppy, he's supposed to... <laughs> Come in. Oh, it's Mr. Wimple. Come in, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. Oh. <laughs> Old man, if you can't find a vacant chair, sit on a pile of books. I'll give you a literary background. <laughs> My goodness, I never saw so many books. Are you taking a correspondence course in something, Mr. McGee? No, no, he's studying up on American government, Mr. Wimple. He's going to take out citizenship papers, Wimp. But that takes two years, Mr. McGee. <laughs> That's a lot of mahaha, Wimp. <laughs> that two-year stuff may be okay for immigrants, but not for a guy like me that knows a few answers. I got influence. I know the right people. I can pull more wires than a cut-rate piano tuner. I got drag. My goodness. You talk like an American citizen already, Mr. McGee. I am a citizen, Wimp, but I got no way to prove it, you see, so I'm going to play it safe. Pass the test for citizenship, take the oath of malfeasance, and get my paper. Been studying for it, too. Ask me something. Go on, Mr. Wimple. Ask him something. Anything? Anything. Just ask me a question. All righty. <clears throat> May I have a drink of water? Save me, Mr. Wimple, but he means a question about American history or government. Yeah. Oh, all righty. Uh, what public body is known as the Nine Old Men? Oh, that's a sense. The Chicago White Sox. <laughs> no, dearie, it's the United States Supreme Court. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, try me again, Wimp. I'm afraid I haven't time for any more, Mr. McGee. I have to go home and finish some poems. Oh. I'm trying to make enough money to buy Sweetie Face a new fur coat. Sweetie Face, you mean that? Uh... Yes, my big old wife. <laughs> I'm writing some poems that resort hotels can pin up this summer. Oh, you got any with you, Wim? Yes, I have. Oh. One of them is for the hotel bedroom wall. It goes, I guess they're requested not to parade through the lobbies in scanty attire. New guests are quite frequently frightened away because it looks like the joint is on fire. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Wimp. Great, Wimp, great. You got one for the guy that's always tipping the canoe? Yes. That's my best one, Mrs. G. He'll pin that one up in the boathouse. Oh. It goes, hmm, a muscular girl named Miss Hubble gave a boat rocking joker some trouble. As she held his head under, he realized his blunder and sent up his regret in a bubble. <laughs> well, I've got to get back home, folks. Goodbye now. So long, Mr. Back to work. Now, let me see. Where was it? Oh, yeah. You know anything about the Bill of Rights, Molly? Yes, sir. Uh, don't worry about it, though, dearie. I told him we'd pay it by Thursday. Who? <laughs> Mr. Wright, the hardware man. He sent us a bill. No, no. <laughs> I mean the first uh, ten amendments to the Constitution. The Bill of Rights. You see, the first ten amendments were Hello, the... Hello, Molly. Hello, Fibber. Hey, if you're going bowling tonight, I'll... Oh, you're reading, pal? He's going to take out papers, Mr. Wilcox. He wants to be an American citizen. Hell, you never told me. Are you really a foreigner? <laughs> Did you swallow that stuff about the good old days in Peoria, Jr.? <laughs> Why, well, that's camouflage. I was smuggled into this country from a tramp steamer in 1913. <laughs> Come ashore one foggy night just north of San Pedro, California. Four other Chinese fellows and myself. <laughs> Four other Chinese? You mean you're a... Yes. I'm Chinese, Jr. Used to be a coolie on a melon plantation outside of Shanghai. <laughs> Come to me, my melon coolie baby. But gee whiz, pal. Look, your face. You don't uh, look. Plastic surgery, do you? <laughs> ah, I often long for those mysterious oriental nights with the samisen strumming their mandarins outside of old Fuyang's. <laughs> And the golden throated Bohau Doi singing in the branches of the chow mein tree. <laughs> and those sing song girls serving my oolong in fragile little gin rickshaws as the Wang Fu rises over the snow capped sandbank. <laughs> Someday, me. Ah, but no. No. Now I become very good Melican citizen. <laughs> Look, pal, you told me once that in 1913 you had a vaudeville act in Chicago. Sure, did I tell you what theater? No. The Oriental. Right, dearie? Right, my lotus blossom. 
Long Tack Sam, I was known as in them days. Oh, now, cut it out. I don't believe a word of this stuff, pal. You're about as oriental as bubblegum. What goes on here? I haven't got a birth certificate, Junior. I want to be able to prove I'm a citizen. I'm getting ready to take the examination right now. Ask me a question. Go on. Anything about our history, our government. Okay. Who was Pennsylvania named after? Fred Waring and his Pennsylvania. <laughs> going to be on for Johnson's Wax again this summer, too. Isn't that a coincidence? Yes, isn't it? Hey, by the way, I don't think I have a birth certificate either. The courthouse in Omaha burned down when I was just a little tight. I even remember the day. No kidding. Just like it was yesterday. I was sitting on the kitchen floor playing soldier. You play soldier sitting down? I was an officer. Oh. (laughs) Anyway, I remember the kid next door running past, hollering, courthouse is on fire, courthouse is on fire. And I'll bet you trampled down three regiments getting out the door. (laughs) <laughs> no, I just sat there. You see, my mother had just low-coated the kitchen linoleum before she went shopping. And the glistening beauty of it had me spellbound. Couldn't take my eyes off it. Yes, but if the courthouse burned down with your birth certificate... Well, sir, for minute after minute, I sat staring at that glittering linoleum, admiring the bright colors intensified by the shining surface. Three fire engines went by. I thought of my mother pouring out that glow coat, spreading it around with a long-handled applier. A hook and ladder tore past. I didn't move. Dull, child, weren't you? I remember how happy my mother was when she spread that Johnson's glow coat around and waited for it to dry with no rubbing and no buffing. And how delighted she was when in 20 minutes or less it dried to a gorgeous, prospective, shimmering surface. And I remember her telling me how easy it was to wipe things up with a damp cloth. Uh, waxy. Yes? You through? Yes. You through, huh? Yes. Well, then pick up your damp cloth and go on home. <laughs> I guess I'd better finish my studies and get down to that federal building. Well, board. you get with it, dearie. I've got to go upstairs and make the beds. Let me know now when you're ready to go. Okay, baby. Ah, oh, there goes a good kid. She deserves to have a well-informed, educated man for a husband. But for the time being, I'll have to do. <laughs> now, let me see. Oh, come in. Oh, hello there, Jeannie. Oh, I can't stop to dilly-dally right now, sis. This is a crucial day in my life. Well, I was just... Mm-hmm. I'm taking my citizenship test today, Jeannie. Get my papers. That's why I got all these history books to study. It sure is a lot of books, I bet you. Mm, I'll say. I never thought them. Mm-hmm. I says, I'll say. Say what? That's quite a pile of books. That's what I said. I know you did. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> You know much about American history, sis? Personally, I never realized how fascinating it was. Oh, I had quite a lot of it in school, mister. Mm -hmm. Like Captain John Smith and Hocoponus and... (laughs) Pocahontas, sis. Yes. Captain John Smith and Hocoponus and uh, (laughs) Daniel Broom and uh, the battle between the monitor and that quartet. Uh, Whoa, whoa, whoa. The monitor and what? That quartet, the Mary Max. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, the monitor and the Mary Max. There was another one be- between George Washington and the King's Men. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we had all about George Washington and his men were so poor they didn't have any shoes and they went barefooted in the snow at Woody Valley. <laughs> Valley Forge. Mm-hmm. You know, Jeannie, I ran across an interesting bit of Americana just a few minutes ago. Did you ever hear of Francis Scott Key? Oh, sure I have, I bet you. He wrote the Star-Spangled Banner. Right, but mm-hmm. not many people know this angle about it. You see, Francis Scott Key and his brother Charlie got captured by the British and were held on a British gunboat while they bombarded Fort McHenry, you see. Oh, boy, exciting, huh? Well, sir, <laughs> it was such a thrilling sight to Francis and Charlie to see the flag still flying the next morning that Charlie says to Francis, Frank, he says, I think I'll write a song about this. Well, that's funny, says Francis. I was just thinking the same thing. Let's both write a song. So they did. You mean they collaborated, huh? Yes. <laughs> Nobody knows for sure, sis. One of them wrote the Star Spangled Banner, but they'd never tell anybody which one of them did it. Uh, Charlie Key says Francis did it, and Francis Key says Charlie did it. Isn't that interesting? Why? Because to this very day, when people sing the Star Spangled Banner, they're never quite sure of the key. Oh. <laughs> Men sing. Linda, Linda, Linda. When I go to sleep, I never count sheep. I count all the charms about Linda. And they say it seems in all of my dreams, I walk with my arms about Linda. But what good does it do me? 
down here to your office this afternoon to take out naturalization papers, Judge? That's right, Doctor. Mail the trivia says the man was born in Peoria, but that he insists on being naturalized, so I'm going along with the mayor's gag. Well, a bookmaker told me years ago that the one race he couldn't dope out was the human. Neither can I. And I've looked at it from all sides, believe me. Uh-oh. This must be my pigeon now. Do I uh, look stern enough? You look frightening. Pour it on him now, Judge. I'll duck out the back door. See you at the elf. Right. Come in. Good morning, Judge. Or, uh, good afternoon. How do you do? Uh, I'm Trevor McGee, Your Honor. This is Mrs. McGee. How do you do, I'm sure. Mrs. McGee, have a chair, please. Uh, Mail the trivia told me all about your case, Mr. McGee. Now, you realize I'll have to ask you a few questions to test your knowledge of our country and our government. Well, fire away, Judge. Ask me anything. I'm loaded. Now, McGee, watch your language. I, uh, I suppose you've read the Declaration of Independence, of course. Read it? <laughs> you want to hear it? Okay. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. Uh, just a minute, please. And to assume please. among the powers of the earth... Oh, did you say something, Judge? <laughs> he knows it all, Your Honor, forwards and backwards. Yeah, you want to hear it backwards? And another with them connected which have banned uh, political... Uh, uh, <laughs> never mind that, McGee. I, I see you know the declaration. Now, uh, now tell me, what kind of government does the United States have? Well, now, that's a matter of opinion, Your Honor. <laughs> Some people holler and scream about the government, but I think it's the finest... No, 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 McGee. Huh? He means is it a monarchy or a democratic form of government or... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. I didn't understand the question. It's a democratic form of government. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, at least it is now. It might be Republican government next time, but you never can tell how, to, how these elections will go. Yeah. All right. That answer is correct. Now, you know, of course, that uh, George Washington was our first president. Oh, he knows that, Your Honor. We got that in school. Yeah. I see. Well, he must have gone to very fine schools. Uh, now, uh, but maybe you didn't know who the second president was, McGee. <laughs> you mean John Adams? I told you I'm loaded with information, Judge. John's boy, John Quincy, was the sixth president. You know, he got married while he was overseas, of course. No, I didn't know. Oh, sure. <laughs> married his wife in London in 1797. They had three boys and a girl. Now, McGee, huh? Judge Krieger isn't interested in that. My goodness. No, you know. no. Uh, just answer the question, Mr. McGee, if you please. Well, gee whiz, aren't you going to ask me some tough ones, Your Honor? Like, where was the center of the meat packing industry in 1818? Cincinnati. Or where did the majority of Americans live in 1490? P.P. <laughs> <laughs> that is very interesting, Why, but certainly I... certainly it is. The whole history of this country is interesting. You take from the time Tom Jefferson and Ben Franklin and the boys sat down and wrote the declaration... Oh, now, McGee, Judge Krieger doesn't want to hear all about that. Why, Molly, you mean to say that a judge like Judge Krieger isn't interested in the history of our own country? Well, of course I'm interested, well, but I... Matt, uh... it's like I say, there wasn't much money in the country in those days, but there was a lot of hearts. The strong hearts of free men and free women who stuck together and worked together and cleared a wilderness to build their homes and plant their fields. And the colonies grew... Colonies has grown through wars and depressions, 
and good times and bad. And all the time it's grown and gathered strength and power till it's the greatest nation on earth today, the United States of America. Why, McGee, that's beautiful. My boy, that was a very interesting thing. You've told me things about this country I'd long ago forgotten. What a tremendous knowledge you have. <laughs> Nothing any red-blooded American boy should not know. I've never had a man before me who was more deserving to be called an American citizen. I'll uh, have your papers made out right away. Oh, that's wonderful, Your Honor. McGee, you can stay. <laughs> that's well, Judge. <laughs> uh, by the way, that, uh, that little accent of yours, Judge... Harvard man, are you? No, no. I was born in Canada, McGee. Came down here in uh, 1927 and liked it so well I stayed. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Adopted the country, eh? When did you take out your papers, Judge? Why, uh, back in, uh, my papers. Great Scott, I completely forgot it. <laughs> Sit down, Judge. I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Good news. How would you like to have your own personal car initials? Well, listen to this. You've heard me sing the praises of Johnson's Car New, the famous car polish that cleans and polishes in one easy application. Now, if you'll discover for yourself how wonderful Car New is, we'll send you two sets of your own personal initials for your car. These car initials are really something. They're half an inch high, tastefully designed in striking gold color. You put one set of three initials on each side of your car, and believe me, they really look smart. They take only a jiffy to apply, too. And here's all you do to get these handsome decal car initials. First, buy some Johnson's Car New. Then send the sales slip or the name of the dealer from whom you bought your car new, together with a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Fibber McGee and Molly, Racine, Wisconsin. If you live in Canada, address your request for initials to Fibber McGee and Molly, Brantford, Ontario. Print clearly which initials you want, any three, and get your request in the mail right away. Plan to buy some Johnson's Car New and send in tomorrow. Car New is spelled C-A-R-N-U. After the judge said he was taking out his papers right away, then what did he say, dearie? Well, he says I was an inspiration to him. He says I was the finest example of a real American citizen he had ever seen. Ah, my hero. Yep. I wonder if him or Latrivia would fix this dad-ratted jury sums that come in the mail. What? Oh, my gosh, I'm not going to get to sit around in a stale courtroom all day listening. That stuff's for the yokel. The immigrant. That's what that stuff's McGee. for. That's... Citizen. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Marlowe Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. The National Broadcasting Company. This is WMAQ NBC in Chicago.